Hi there guys, well I've got to feed the family, so I've got some stories for you this week about iPad OS 16, iPhone 14 and the possibility of a brand new home entertainment system from Apple. Let's get into this week's Apple Views. First I've got for you this week is about right to pair. If you recall, it was announced at the end of last year and since then it's been missing in action. We wondered what had happened to it. I'd written some blogs on it and also made some videos about it. Well, this week it became a reality and as long as you've got an iPhone 13 or later, you can take advantage of it. The idea being that you go online and rent the toolkit and the tools you get are the same tools that the Apple engineers themselves use and then you buy the parts you need. So say you want to pair a screen on an iPhone 13, that's gonna cost you $279. If you were to go into to an Apple shop itself, the guys there would charge you $269. So it sounds like it's only $10 cheaper, but the devil, as it always is, is in the detail. And when you've repaired your phone and you've got your damaged screen, you send that back to Apple. They then recycle it. And once they've got receipt of that screen, they will give you a credit on your wallet app for around about $30, $35. So in actual fact, you're about $45 better off for doing it yourself rather than taking it into the store, as long as you trust yourself. Personally, I think I would just go and pay the money. I would love to be able to take things apart and repair them, but I don't trust it. They're all expensive items. And when my MacBook Pro turns up, I don't think you're gonna see me trying to repair the screen on there if it should ever get damaged myself. But uh, anyway, at least now we know it's a real entity and how it's fleshed up and working. Let me know, is that something you're interested in? Will you be doing your own running repairs on your Apple products? Not only have I got a MacBook Pro on order, I've also got a studio display on order. I won't be getting mine until June, but guys that have got theirs have been saying, as I'm sure you know, that the webcam is just rubbish. Weak, blurry images and a lot of image noise as well. Apple were aware of it very early on. I said, yep, no problems, we'll roll out a firmware update and it'll be fine. Well, it was rolled out this week to beta users and apparently it's not made any difference at all. A little bit of an improvement to center stage, but Jason Snell of 9to5Mac put up some images saying, really, it still hasn't solved it. And what that has proven is that it's not a software issue, but it is a hardware issue. And it seems to be down to one of two things and both of them related to sensors. So the only two possible solutions are to solve this problem are to use a higher resolution sensor so that the cropped image is at least 12 megapixels or use a larger sensor that will capture more light and help get rid of some of that noise around the images that people are seeing at the moment. Personally, I don't think I'm going to be using the webcam on my studio display a lot, but let me know, have you bought one? Have you got one? Have you used it? And are you disappointed? Also, what are the speakers like? I hear they're really good. I mean, obviously I've got studio monitors mine, so again, I won't be using that much, but I'd be really keen to know what you're finding the studio display like, because I've still got to wait a month for my so it's that part of the video where I'm going to talk iPhone 14. You can go and make yourself a cup of tea or you can stay with me. I've got to report on it. You know you'd be disappointed if I didn't. This week there's been a couple of stories come out. One was from case manufacturers. As they gear up ready to go into production later this year, we've had some leaks now of the first cases that are coming out. And it's confirmed what we kind of knew. There are only two screen sizes, a 6.1 inch and a 6.7 inch. There is going to be no iPhone 14 mini. And also we were hoping that maybe because the exterior of the phone looked very similar that if you had a 13 case you'd be able to carry it over and swap it out onto the 14. Unfortunately, certainly for the two Pro phones that doesn't look likely because of the camera bump and also on the two non-Pro phones, again it looks unlikely because the overall depth of the phone is thicker on the 14 than it is on the 13. It's going to be uh, just over 11 millimeters, so it's going to be a chunky old boy but unfortunately if you're buying a 14, not only you have to buy the phone, you're going to have to spend the extra money on the case as well. It's just the Apple way, you know it is. And the other bit of iPhone 14 news we had this week, well, it was to do with the glass on the front of the 14s. It was released on a Chinese social network called Beidou. And again, it's confirmed a couple of things for us. It's on the two Pro phones. It's confirmed the size of the pill and punch or pill and hole layout that we're going to have now, which replaces the notch on the two Pro phones. As you know, on the non-Pro phones, we're still going to have the notch. And also it's shown that the bezels are going to be ever so slightly thinner on the two Pro phones as as well. So that's your iPhone 14 news for this week. I'm just sure I'll have more at the same time next week for you though. 
away now from iPhone and over to Apple Watch. And later this year, we fully expect to see the release of Apple Watch 8. There's a few things we know about it. First of all, the two faces, we don't think are gonna be changing sizes. It doesn't look to fit into this year's design remit. So it's still gonna be 41 millimeter and 45 millimeter options. Sensors are coming to the phone. We know we're getting some sort of body temperature sensor. I reported on that last week in Apple Views, but it is only gonna be for women to help measure their ovulation cycle. Also, we're going to be getting better sleep monitoring because the sleep monitoring app that is built into the phone at the moment isn't as good as the third party apps, which is a little bit embarrassing. Their biggest problem with that is still battery drain, but they're working on that and looking to improve the inbuilt app for sleep monitoring. And the last thing is there's going to be a new chip, an SASOC. So if you're an Apple Watch wearer, what of those things are you looking forward to? And would it be enough to make you change from your Apple Watch 7 over to an Apple Watch 8? Let me know. And don't forget, you can get in touch with me over on Twitter, D Talking. And for my viewers over in the States, from one week today as this video goes out, it is Mother's Day. Don't forget, date in your diary, 8th May. And if you use Apple Pay, you can get yourself some great deals on things such as flowers, perfumes, and fragrances, and personalized gifts as well. I'll leave a link in the show notes to that. But it's a great idea, and it's just a little reminder, don't forget your mum. You've only got one, so treat her right, won't you? Last week, I reported on HomePod and the fact that it seems to be appreciating in value and going up in value at the moment. HomePod doesn't want to go away, the story. There's a couple of things going around at the moment. They're saying that HomePod, the original HomePod, might be replaced. I think they realize now how people are loving it, but also that it might be integrated into a completely different product where there's a HomePod as part of the system, but it also integrates Apple TV and FaceTime. So it becomes very much central to the home, something all the family can use. And then you've got the HomePod as part of it, central to it. But uh, I like the idea of that. What about you? On to iPad OS 16. And there's not that much out there at the moment, but the rumors, the hot takes I'm here are yet again the notes app is going to be shown some love they keep toying with that something they're clearly not happy with and also for the larger ipad users with your larger screen real estate they're looking to improve the multitasking feature of it and go maybe more of a windows route so you can make use of that great real estate that you've got also again people are still saying they'd love to see some pro apps on there on the larger ipad certainly because you've got all the power that you could ever need and on the ipad air and also maybe being able to sign into other user accounts like you can on a Mac onto iPad OS. I actually wrote a blog about iPad and its predicament at the moment, and I'll leave a link to that in the notes for this video as well. But if you're a large iPad user, what do you think? Would you like better multitasking? And on to that problem that I mentioned about Mac Studio, have you got an M1 Max Mac Studio? And if you have, are you experiencing a screech, a really annoying high frequency, a high pitch screech? Apparently a lot of users are having that issue at the moment. They've been taking them back in their droves. Apple have given them replacement units, and even on replacement units, they are experiencing experiencing the same problems. It looks like it's something to do with the heatsink because of course on the ultra version of the Mac Studio, they've got a much more robust, a much bigger heatsink, a copper plated heatsink to get rid of the heat with inside the Mac Studio. So it looks like, it looks like there's a problem there that Apple are gonna need to sort out. But if you've had that problem, let me know. Last story this week is to do with iMac and Mark Gurman reported that they are already trying out an M3 chip inside of the 24 inch iMac. Other than the new chip, which will only be an incremental change over the base chip of the M2 when it comes out this year. There won't be many design changes. And also, we're going to have to wait until the back end of next year to be looking to get that machine. So if you're waiting for a Mac desktop, don't hang around. Go and buy the iMac 24 inch with the M1 or M2 in that we're going to get this year. It's a great machine, but it looks like the M3 is already being tested. And lastly, Mark Gurman reckons the iMac Pro is coming back. What do you think of that? Let me know. Are you an iMac Pro user and would you love to see a new one? And that is all I've got on Apple Views for you this week. I hope you enjoyed all the stories. If I've forgotten anything, get in touch with me over on Twitter, D Talking Tech. Have yourselves a great week and I'll catch you next week on the next video.